Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening wherever you are in the world. And thank you guys for tuning in to FRS Season 6, where PlayStation is going to be kicking it off here in Spain, where we are returning for the first time since Season 3. And of course, it's actually going to be a new track with a newly reprofiled Turn 10 out of DRS Zone number 2, which makes the run up through 11 and 12 a bit more interesting, to say the least. Of course, this is going to be a long, long run down to turn one. At 579 meters, it is going to be the longest on any of the tracks that we'll see this calendar season in FRS. Making turn one one of our action zones, not just at the race start, but throughout the rest of the race. And that will lead us to our only other action zone in this intro sequence, although we have seen some spectacular overtakes happen elsewhere on the track, even including turn three, that long tricky right-hander, but it's newly reprofiled turn 10 should make things quite interesting. Of course, we have the hard, medium, soft tires with the mediums being seven tenths slower per lap and hards being slower by almost a second and a half per lap. You can see the softs though fall off quite quickly as uh, we are going to be joining now qualifying to see what these guys can do. So let's go ahead and get uh, transitioned over here. I'm very sorry that we are not gonna be able to, uh, well, I'm going to be getting used to the controls over here on the, um, excuse me, there we go. Now we got some sound coming through. But as I get used to the uh, controls of PlayStation, of course we have our two PlayStation champions out there being able to defend their title with Mako and Franz Wolher. It looks like Franz's brother is not going to be joining us this race, unfortunately. Uh, Franz was trying to get him uh, and call him um, on the phone, but Mako, PlayStation Division 1 champion, looking to defend his title, uh, putting himself amongst some of the greats of FRS who have been able to defend their title in the past. So as we're going to go ahead and ride on board with him for his first lap. He'll be the first car to cross the start finish line and we'll see exactly what he can do. I expect he's going to be one of the faster drivers out here today uh, along with Bon Homie um, among many other guys. And we have some new drivers joining us as well. We have Jeff for God, Canadian Necktie, um, Thigh Milk Menace who I've never seen uh, before I don't believe as Mako does a great job coming down there, just taking a little bit of the inside curb of turn two. You can usually gain a lot. It's a high risk, high reward section though. If you take too much or you put down the power just wrong, breaking down at the 50 meter board there, uh, then you can find yourself spinning around at turn two. And he does a nice job really opening up each of his corners and being able to do just carry so much more speed through there. Excuse me, I'm by myself in the commentary box today, so I'm going to be getting distracted pretty easily without having somebody uh, to keep me on track. But as we're coming up to turn nine, which is going to put us on to our second and only other DRS straight here, down to the newly profiled, reprofiled turn 10, breaking just before the 50 meter board coming in, and you want to get yourself out as wide as you can to set yourself up very well coming up through turns 11 and 12, 12 being an uphill right-hander. Um, not as tricky as it used to be in the past coming out of that short tight hairpin and now he's coming through the final chicane here and he's getting right back on the power opening it up and then going to try and point towards that uh, stewards area as he does a 117.7 so uh, fairly fast I will have to say that was, that was very competitive um, for some other drivers looks like Robin um, might have had his lap compromised as the other Alpine, Jeff Forgot, is going to now cross the start finish line and he's going to go a 123. So a bit far off as we're saying some other ones coming now. IP Switch, of course, being another uh, very competitive driver throughout the season's past here in PlayStation. As it looks like Ryan is, or sorry, Rireen, Rireen? Comes in and does a 117.79. So a nice job from the. Uh, Ferrari driver making his debut, the other Ferrari driver making his debut. Excuse me, no, he's a uh, reserve driver, actually, I believe. I believe the full-time seat is occupied by uh, Mittens for Kittens, who was not driving with us today. He's probably out doing some of his own um, driving, as we see. Is, uh, the other Ferrari driver of Canadian Necktie diving into the pits now, which means that it's going to be uh, the Red Bull of iHunter F1. is going to be our next driver across the line. 
Um, and he's going to come in and put a fairly decent lap time in. A 1.18.1, which provisionally puts him at P5 for the time being. So uh, we'll go ahead and cut on over to Bonhomi, who's also diving into the pits. Doesn't look like he is. Well, Franz Waller has been disqualified for driving the wrong way. Oh, he got beached. Okay, yeah. So I tried reminding people in PlayStation um, that y these cars do get beached depending on how low your ride height is. As we'll go ahead and cut on over to Furry Onyx. But yeah, you can get beached. And we saw it happen multiple times as it looks like Furry is recharging his batteries. He might be trying to... Uh, let's take a look. As on, yeah, he's... He might be charging up for another go um, here. It looks like, yeah, his ERS is fairly high. So he's going to be doing another push lap, I believe. Um, so this lap time... Oh, no, he's missing a front wing. My goodness, I completely missed that. So, um... Yeah, that makes sense, but Franz Wohler, the first one to get caught out with the beaching there. Um, as we'll go ahead, I believe OJ Fields is going to be on an in-lap himself. Yeah, it looks like he's 11 seconds down in his best time, and I Hunter is 5 seconds down. So everybody heading in back, making their way to the pits. Although I guess we can cut on over to YRG, Ahi Guy, I'm just going to call him YRG. Um, he's a returning driver, just uh, under a new pseudonym now. Uh, I can't remember what he was named in the past. He spins round. Ooh, and that's another front wing lost. This time for the Williams driver. As he hopefully is not beached. Is he beached? He might get disqualified here. Don't forget, you can't do a reset to check there, buddy. But yes, we've seen a lot of people being caught out by the... Um, by the... Um, as it looks like Canadian Necktie is going to be coming out and uh, is that Bonhomi ahead of him who is also going to be yet to set a lap time. You can see the dirt all there or the rubber and possibly dirt uh, all on the side of this car as he invalidates his outlap. But that doesn't matter. But yes, to get to my point um, while we have time. Yeah, a couple of things to note is that you can get beached here in this new game depending on how low your ride height is because of how important that new floor regulations are. Uh, you can find yourself getting caught out and make sure that you do reset to track um, because it is uh, it is one of the only instances uh, where you can do that. I believe there is a particular instance in spinning out into the pits, but I believe that the game auto resets you to track possibly. Either way, all the drivers out there watching, you can reset to track if you find yourself beached and unable to move. So Bonhomie is going to be leading this next group of cars setting their second flying laps, although I guess... Some of them haven't even set a proper flying lap yet, but Bonhomie just making sure his tires are in the right temperature. And that is yet another interesting thing for this season. Of course, with the new F1 regulations being reflected in the new game as well, everybody has a free choice of tire, regardless of where you start on the grid. Uh, P10 and lower now also have free tire choice. So everybody is going to be burning through these softs as they are a lot less reliable, shall we say this season as Bonhomie will go ahead and ride on board with him like we did with Mako earlier on today as he starts his flying lap. He's not really too aggressive there through turn three, but it also seems to keep the car very stable. Not much understeer that we have seen in other places. He puts in a purple sector one there. What was that? Around a 22.5, I believe I saw. But nice job from the McLaren driver, Bonhomie. And he keeps it real nice and steady through here. I was going to say that it didn't look too aggressive through turn three, but it might have been because the car was so planted. Used to seeing so many people pick up understeer there. So he's doing a wonderful job coming up through turn nine now. Shifts down to turn or to gear six, not turn six. Shifts down, and it looks like we have the Mercedes, a furry Onyx, finding himself the wrong way round again. Um, as Von Homie just having such a clean, stable lap through here, really doing a great job to keep this car real steady and very easy to drive. It looks like what a fantastic job by this McLaren driver as he's coming through the final chicane now. And I suspect it doesn't look like he put in a purple sector 2 there, but it should put him far up into, I'd imagine, above P5. Somewhere in there, as I am wrong, just outside at P6, as Canadian Necktie is going to be the first next one to come across the line. The new driver in the Ferrari, his, uh, making his debut here, comes and puts in a 117.9. Currently only four drivers in the 117.9s, as we'll go ahead and cut to... Uh, one of the next drivers, it looks like Robin NL might be getting his drive a bit impeded by OJ Fields on his outlap. But yep, indeed, Robin uh, is going to be diving back into the pits. Uh, previously teammates with IP Switch making the change over to Alpine this season um, for Season 6. As Furry Onyx still is struggling to keep his car the right way round. 
around this track. Did some evaluation races with him. Oh boy, oh boy, it just gets from bad to worse for the Mercedes driver. Yeah, but he's been one of the drivers that have struggled with the new handling model. I myself have certainly struggled with it. Uh, and part of it is just the new tire, uh, new tire physics model is is a, a bit more challenging. But we'll cut on over to the other Williams driver here of YRG, who is one of the three drivers who have yet to set a valid lap time. Um, as we just saw Robin and Furry Onyx, as that looks like that was IP Switch getting out of the way, or possibly I Hunter, excuse me, getting out of the way for YRG, doing a good job so far. Keeping the car not as wide of lines as we would see for some of the faster drivers, but having not set a time, and I believe if this yellow flag keeps getting out of the way for us, we might be able to see uh, how much time is left. I believe you should have enough time to be able to set a banker lap, come in, put on a new set of soft tires, and really go all out on your final flyer, uh, where you can just really put it all out there and uh, not really have to worry too much about consequences as he puts in a purple sector two there out of 52 so nice job from the Williams driver here YRG as he comes through the final sector looks a little bit squirrely at the rear there but doing a good job to keep it planted and keep it together as he comes through the final chicane and he's gonna be opening it up and let's see where he's going to end up on the timing tower. He comes across the line with a 1.18.9, so puts him provisionally into P8, but we still have seven minutes left in qualifying, just over half of the qualifying session left, or just under half of the qualifying session left, excuse me, as we cut over to the next driver who's going to be crossing the line, keeping his lap valid as he, woo, really pushing the track limits there as uh, this track is getting faster and faster. And uh, as noted from Quimby in the PC4 comp, Com commentary. Uh, Hunter is going to cross the line and jump just barely over Canadian Necktie uh, for the P5 slot as Canadian Necktie is on his outlap. So that is going to be. Oh, I was going to cut over to Rereen, who's doing his. About to start the another flying lap. Ryer G, I believe he is going to be on an in lap as well. Yeah, it's second down. OJ Fields, I saw him spin around earlier. Uh, he is 14 seconds up, of course, he hasn't really had a uh, particularly representative lap time with the 138, but I know that he did spin earlier. I don't know if he's going to be coming into the pits after this one or really sticking with it and going to go through all the way. Yes, he is. It's still a bit slower. I remember seeing him have a little spin a on the uh, second DRS straight earlier there, but uh, we'll go ahead and cut over to Canadian neck tire. No, excuse me. We're going to cut over to Furry Onyx, one of the drivers who also is still yet to put out a valid lap time, um, as we'll cut over to Robin NL and see if he is, I can see that he is on a flying lap, but we'll go ahead and stick with Furry for the time being and hope that he is able to keep it together and not find himself the wrong way round again in the lovely Mercedes with its melted side pods and going back to that classic, oh, and it looks like we jinxed him as he spun around. Right at turn three. Man, Furry Onyx is just struggling out there today as he, whew, thankfully was ghosted. So we'll go ahead and cut on over to Robin NL, who puts in a purple sector two with a 52.8. We might be having some timing tower glitches. I know we've had some on previous games where it just shows us. Mako improves his time and cuts down to a 117.6. So further avoiding any kind of threat from Rereen in the Ferrari. Um, but Robin NL is known to be quite pacey himself as you can see the ERS lights flashing on the rear he's going to come across and only do a 119.7 so uh yeah not the best time that I've seen from Robin I he's been quick in the past and I want to say that he has actually been a constructors championship champion in season three or season four with his Red Bull teammate IP switch in the past not 100% sure on that but I it sounds right I just know that the Red Bull guys have been quite dominant in the past as we'll go over to Canadian Necktie who's going to be uh, next driver across the line as OJ Fields dives into the pit. So not the best exit out of the final chicane. Could have picked up a little bit more speed there as he comes across the line. And is he going to be able to improve? It looks like he does not. He stays P6. So yeah, I completely missed the timing tower there as Furry Onyx has dived into the pits as well. The only other driver who has yet to set a lap time. So we'll go over to Thy Milk Menace, or as I'll just call him Milk Menace here. Uh, rounding through the turn uh, 12 there. 
Seems to be doing good so far. Nice job from this Alpha Romeo driver and this lovely Alpha Romeo livery. I absolutely love it. Almost a borderline candy apple red paint. And ooh, he's getting a great exit there, carrying a lot of speed. Ooh, runs wide. Is it going to stay valid? Yes, it is. He crosses the line of 119.2. He does improve by four tenths, but I don't think it was enough to jump anybody, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, so he stays provisionally P9 there as we're coming towards the final final phases here in qualifying as we'll go ahead and cut on over to a, another driver who is going to be starting their outlap let's go on over to jeff or god a reserve driver for playstation coming in as a late sign up but um i'm really interested to see what kind of pace he has if that 123 really is representative or if uh he's yeah it looks like he runs a bit wide there not bad to play it safe there taking some inside curve there on turn three helping to widen his racing line coming out of that final corner. He could park that car outside a bit more to the left, but he's already four tenths up on his previous best, so he might be able to jump his uh, his teammate, Robin NL. And looking at the steering wheel inputs, I'd imagine that Jeff Forgot is going to be on a controller, just looking at how the inputs are a bit not as smooth as you would see from somebody who's using a steering wheel input, but doing a great job to keep the car on track not invalidate and oh i might have just jinxed no he keeps it somehow he doesn't pick up track when it limits warning there as he goes ahead and bails out of it to let uh some a red bull driver who i believe is on their outlap yes of uh i hunter f1 starting his flyer lap there so we'll continue to ride on board waiting to see if furry onyx is going to get out and set a flying lap or not um as bon homie is starting his flying lap. That's actually Dante ahead, Bonhomie's teammate, and the McLaren that's ahead of iHunter. Hopefully, they don't pick up too much traffic. Actually, I just realized that they're really early on. They just came out of the pit. So we'll cut on over to Bonhomie as it looks like IP Switch is just spun around, actually. I was going to say that he was just uh, getting out of the way for Bonhomie as Bonhomie was making his way through. It looks like traffic over there is starting to pick up a little bit with Furry Onyx and the other drivers who have just exited the pits, but Bonhomie himself. He's not going to be seeing any kind of that traffic, so he's going to have a very lovely final flyer, I would imagine. Unless he makes a mistake, he would be able to probably recharge his batteries and go for a double push lap. But yeah, with the new regulations of that anybody gets free choice of tires, you can see everybody except for Milk Menace and Jeff or God is starting their final flying laps, or coming out on their outlaps, excuse me, rather. Uh, but we are riding on board with Bon Homie. Our PS admin doing a nice job to keep a wide line, a wide line, excuse me, a wide line there through turn 10. That newly reprofiled one doing a nice job climbing up through turn 12, keeping it wide, opening up the apex, going inside through this final chicane, doing a nice job. These chicanes are so important to be able to string these corners together as it's very important to keep it very flowy. And so Bonhomie is going to come across the line and does he improve? No. Oh, yes, he does. Excuse me. He does improve. I was looking at the wrong thing. So he's able to improve ever so slightly, but it does not put him any further up the grid, unfortunately. So I would imagine that he's probably done. Yeah, he's only at around 10% charge on his ERS battery. So we'll cut over to somebody else who might possibly be able to uh, overtake him. We'll go ahead and actually, yeah, I don't, oh, there's so many cars on track. I do not know where to go to. All I know is we don't want to go to Bonhomie as he has finished his final lap. So we'll ride on board with uh, Dante, the McLaren driver, who he is the first one to put in a 51-0 there in the Sector 2. So Dante looking very good to possibly threaten Mako. And currently with that time, a f half a second improvement, he certainly would be able to topple Mako. But Mako is close behind him as well, I believe. Yes, as uh, Franz Roller has uh, DQ'd. So with Dante definitely going to take it by just two hundredths as Hunter <laughs> jumps ahead of him and Mako's going to cross the line here too. Make No, Mako bails on his lap and dives into the pits. So Hunter provisionally takes pull. Let's see what some of the other drivers can do. I believe the next across the line is going to be Bon Homie, who I'd imagine is probably going to go into the pits. No, he's going to go f finish this flying lap. Okay, so who's next? It's going to be Canadian Necktie, who we saw does have some pace. I believe also one of the Alpine drivers, Robin Inel, is going to be the next cross the line who has some pace himself. He does not able he does not push put the car any further up the grid as it looks like Ry Ryan is going to be next across. The Canadian necktie came across the line and stays P5. Is Ry Ryan able to he does he jumps both Dante and Mako being one of the other drivers to be able to get into the 117s. Who was our YRG next missing a front wing there so it's going to be OJ Fields is going to be the only other driver 
who might be able to kind of put in any kind of improvement. No, he's, he's down on his lap time as well. Uh, so that's going to be it for the qualifying session. Um, is OJ Fields is going to peel off into the pit. So there it is. iHunter F1, a new driver with his debut race here at FRS, making a statement. Me, oh my, a 117.5. And Furry Onyx was able to eventually put a lap uh, time in with a 120. Certainly not what he was hoping for and not what I was expecting either. Excuse me, I've got a sneeze coming up here. Hold on a second. So, excuse me, there it is. I Hunter F1, Rereen 75 with a 117.5, and Dante wrapping out the top three there. Mako, our one of the quickest drivers here, starting on the second row. Not used to seeing that from him um, as we are going to be moving on now. There it is, Franz Wolher. Also, our Division II champion, starting from the back of the grid. A uh, lot to take away from this. The top three all within less than a tenth of a second. We absolutely love to see it with Dante being the only seasoned FRS driver there. Um, yeah. Wow. Love the new competition that's in here today. Absolutely loving it. So, um, I guess we'll go ahead and cut away now as we can talk about the... Uh, PlayStation side of things. Unfortunately, it looks like the PC bug of having the host being the only one able to warm up their tires has made its way over to PlayStation as well. So we are not going to be having a formation lap. Everybody is unfortunately going to be stuck on the 70 degree tire blanket warmed tires for the start. So it should make the start sequence very interesting, especially with such a long run down to turn one. And of course, no, everybody making sure to uh, don't ready up. Yep. Got to make sure you get your strategies going. And this is a very interesting track when it comes to strategies. They're, the undercut here is not too powerful. The pit lane itself is a bit short. Uh, or not too short, excuse me, to justify really doing a two-stop. If somebody's already readied up, my goodness gracious. So somebody is just <laughs> absolutely vile and readied up immediately so that, oh... Man, oh man, somebody's readied up right away, and so nobody's going to be able to get their strategies. Of course, the strategy is a bug. You won't be able to change strategies during the race, unfortunately. So, um, yeah, not good. So we're going to be getting right into it. We'll go ahead and cut back to the scenes here. <laughs> Again, no formation lap. Tires are going to be ice cold. Everybody's going to crash into each other, possibly. And with uh, nobody having their proper strategies, uh, who knows? So here we go. The lights start blinking immediately they're out and away we go with i hunter getting a nice job on the inside line as we see uh ip switch to oh to all kinds of shambles all kinds of shambles back there with four drivers already dying on that starting wow okay so a race of attrition franz wooler able to make Make it safely around as we already have a safety car. Again, with the safety car bug, people are going to be slamming on the brakes immediately with the get delta gap usually being around three tenths. Um, wow. I uh, don't know. I'm going to monitor the chat. I am not going to be one to call a red flag because I have never raced on the PlayStation side. This is not my not my place to say anything. Um, four people dying on the start. I don't know what happened. I think tires were just, uh, were just cold uh, for everybody. I have no idea what was going on there. Um, but yeah, so wow, Mako losing some positions. Let's go ahead and take a look at the details here. Position changes because they are biggest winners and losers there. Franz Wohler man managing to uh, stay out of trouble there um, and get himself into the points right now. So basically, if you finish the race, you're going to finish in the points. As we see Robin and L uh, dropping backwards. Don't know if he's spun around or if he's just, yeah, it looks like he might have spun around there. Didn't know if, oh, he's missing a front wing, actually. So, uh, wow, yeah, he is missing a front wing as well. Um, this is very strange. Very, very strange start <laughs> from everybody. Uh, I don't imagine people be coming into the pits. Hard tires certainly cannot last this long into the race, actually, as I go ahead and remember to pull up again. Sorry, uh, first time streaming on the PlayStation. Yeah, nobody's heading into the pits except for those who have picked up any kind of front wing damage, so I just imagine it's going to be Robin and L. But yes, the as we saw earlier on, you can take the hard tires to around lap 26 is about where it's going to be before you have to worry about them going pop. So again, I I would be very surprised if we saw something like that as 
Hunter now reaches to the back of the safety car. Imagine it's going to be a short safety car. Um, as only one person diving into the pits. Though we might see some division four shambles. And that's something else that we can actually take a look at that I had meant to do. Well, we some interesting interesting strategies going on here. Robin NL opting for the softs after he pitted. Uh, OJ Fields on the softs. Then we have Rereen and OJ Fields. Or no, excuse me. Uh, Mako on the hard tires. So... Uh, yeah, as long as those guys are able to avoid shambles on those hard tires, they will be able to fit the softs on at the very end at around, I'd expect, lap 23, lap 24. It's going to be hard to get pace out of those soft tires towards the end, though. It's just the hard tires are just absolute bullets, especially if you're able to pit around lap 16 or 17 off of the medium tires. Your hards are going to be completely fine all the way to the end of the race there. So, yeah, it's going to be uh, very, 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 very... Interesting to keep an eye on that, especially with so many people on different strategies for this race. Robin, I unfortunately missed seeing what tires he started on, so I'm not sure. I can't confidently say whether or not those are the same tires that he opted for in the beginning. So I'd imagine that this safety car is probably going to be going around one last time, although Robin probably not wanting to put too much wear. And, well, he is doing some flying laps right now, it seems like. Certainly trying to catch it to the back of this team, uh, or this train, excuse me, the safety car train. But, yes, uh... <laughs> As we just go ahead and wait for these guys to catch up. Of course, the safety car. Uh, whoops, excuse me. I need to go ahead and get rid of all of this. To, uh, no, disable that. What am I getting rid of? Okay, there we go. That's what I'm getting at here. We'll go ahead and cut back to my hunter. So, yeah, it's the, uh, the hard tires are notoriously difficult to get any kind of temperature into them. Especially behind a safety car that's going so much slower than you're used to in these Formula One cars. And especially in the Aston Martin, as we know, the Mercedes AMG car is uh, slightly quicker slightly quicker than um, significantly quicker. Not just slightly, but significantly quicker than the Aston Martin safety car. So those hard tire runners are going to be struggling. The medium tire runner should fire up after I'd say halfway through a lap if you're not putting any temperature into them, but the hard tires usually take about a full lap before they get up temperature and at racing speed if you're not putting any temperature in there. It's Ryan Ryan. Sorry, I you need to tell me how to pronounce it. Um, I don't know <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, we could say Rihanna, but I I don't I don't know if that would take offense to that. They would take offense to that. So we'll just go with Riri for now. And uh, yeah. Anyways, Mako losing out big time, but his teammate Franz Waller as Canadian necktie retires from the section. What happened to him? As he spun, spins round, wow, as a uh, safety car is going to come in this lap, even though Canadian Necktie is parked all the way out there. That might bug out the safety car, possibly. We'll just have to see as iHunter doing a nice job slowing everybody down. Uh, and what? <laughs> Shit, bulls already three laps in, and we're down to nine runners out of a 14 car grid as iHunter almost starts pulling away. Not 100% sure there. But, uh, yeah, so we're going to have to keep our eye on this and see all those cars behind. Just waiting, eager to go. Eye Hunter waiting for the safety car to fully get into the pit so he doesn't get auto-braked. As he comes out of the final corner there, and he's waiting to catch him napping, I imagine. And you need to get it going, bud, at some point, or else they're going to get a nice tow from you. Oh, it's the other Ferrari of Ryan Ryan, Riri! is spun into the wall and now i hunter goes under it oh unfortunately for riri they're not gonna be up they're gonna have to do a full lap without their front wing so we're heading down here into turn one yrg already making his way up next to dante oh nope he's able to keep it safely there as uh franz wolher has come into the pits as well don't know why he came into the pits don't know what happened to him i don't know if maybe the strategy thing wasn't working on his MFD. I know that that's a known bug there, but Mako making his way back up, overtaking OG Fields and Bon Homie there. I believe it was, or no, excuse me, Ring Ring and uh, someone else. I'm not 100% sure who it was, but so far, I think YRG is doing a good job keeping it in the P3 there uh, as he's made up some significant ground from where he started earlier on as well. Um, nice job there. So hopefully we can finally get into the groove and keep it cool there as uh oh that's a hoss off in the background this oj feels who has lost it and is that going to be a safety i don't see anybody coming out now um man oh man what a, a tremendous start to this season for playstation feel absolutely bad for those guys who just got caught out by yeah 
I did check the menu settings before we loaded in, and it is reduced standard for the damage model. So people are just fully sending it and ending up uh, not where they want to be. But let's go ahead and cut to Mako, who has a nice run out of that final corner there, looking at YRG. And he's getting a brilliant toe, and he's going to send it up. The inside of YRG, how are these guys going to play it out? Mako easily gets ahead, and he's going to have a nice... Oh, oh, but he has a compromise exit out of turn two into turn three. That's going to put YRG alongside him there. Excuse me, I cut to the wrong driver. That is terrible race directing on my part. But, uh, man, oh, man, YRG able to get that move back because Mako is having to take that compromise line through there, taking up the inside line there, and YRG is going to hold on to that P3 for the time being. Meanwhile, we have uh, Franz Wohler, Mako's teammate on uh, causing yellow flags and is he going to come out ahead of Riri? No, it looks like they're on the track map. Riri is going to come out ahead just ever so slightly. Yep, yeah, nearly a second as we go ahead and cut back to this battle unfolding. Mako, Robin in L moving and weaving looking to make a move behind Mako but he does not able to see it. Robin wanting to get these soft tires to work and he looks up the inside of Mako there but it's not there. The move isn't there it's with turn 10 so much wider now. So many more different racing lines you can take but they become extremely compromised so Robin's going to have to wait a little bit later as Mako is also looking as Franz Wohler now retires from the session as he spun out. So we're down down to seven runners only on lap five and that's a full safety car. Full blown safety car has been triggered now. Me oh my, what is going on? <laughs> PlayStation half the field gone by lap six. Are you kidding me? At this rate, we're only going to finish with podium drivers. What is going on? Oh man, oh man. There's not. I'm, I hate to say it, but I'm afraid that we might not see too much track action. By the end of this race, as Bonhomie comes to the pits now, I guess this would be a good time to go ahead and take a look at what tires people have, what their life is looking like. Bonhomie is coming in for the hard tires, opting for, I don't, I believe he was actually within that window to be able to get out and uh, pit. Well, obviously, he was able to pit before the safety car, uh, before he missed the pit under the safety car. So he got a free pit stop there as he's going to pass the safety car now. So we have to keep an eye out on the other drivers. Mako kind of forcing himself to have to go long on these hard tires so he won't be able to get a free pit stop but we'll keep an eye out on these medium runners to see if they do oh man i mean the tires will be able to go to the end but they will be without pace and knowing that bon homie with his hard tires he might be able to go to softs later it's so hard to tell but they'll come around now and we'll just have to keep an eye on to as to what these guys do let's go ahead and see ride aboard with eye hunter see if he opts to dive into the pits for a free pit stop he's not going to Dante is going to, YRG not going to, he's going to stay out, Mako of course we know he's not going to be able to, Robin NL is going to head into the pits now to fit new tires as well, so Dante, Robin NL, and Bon Holy, the only drivers opting for a pre-pit stop, Riri uh, looked like he had the opportunity to, but he opted not to, so let's go ahead and take a look to see what kind of tires these guys put on, Dante opted for the hard, hard tires, excuse me, Robin as well going for the hard tires, so Everybody having made a pit stop already as iHunter comes up to the back, except for these guys in the podium positions right here, currently at the back of the safety car. So I imagine that the safety car is probably going to be out for quite some time as these guys are pretty far spread apart, this field is. And I would really appreciate it if the safety car was able to stay out long enough for everybody to bunch back up because seven runners <laughs> commentating for 26 laps left. I don't know if I could do that. That would be a big ask from me big big ask but whew, what a start for those who are just tuning in we had quite the shambles to a start um jam from jam lads perspective ip switch was just stationary for the start but from my commentary spec perspective from what i saw it looked like ip switch kind of went off track and then back on and then um yeah it basically we lost four runners at the complete start not even before we made it to t1 four runners out safety car deployed canadian necktie dnfing right at right out of the final corner of that first safety car oj feels dnfing i believe what was out of turn nine possibly uh turn three turn four somewhere around there it dnf'd into the wall uh halfway through the safety car restart um yeah so we're down to seven runners and riri picked up some damage too earlier on they started p3 i believe um our pole sitter i hunter f1 being dominant from the very start 
uh, as we see YRG heading into the pits now with the late call to probably, I'd imagine, pit over onto the hard tire. So, yeah, a lot of stuff uh, happening as Riri is still back, but we have a put the pack bunched back up again. Excuse me. This has been, wow, uh, a very interesting race. Um, very, very interesting races. Yep, indeed, the hard tires do go on to YRG, which will be able to go to the end of the race, but it's not ideal. Not ideal, and he's going to be feeling it at the end of the race for sure. Uh, lack of pace wise, that is. So, yeah, what a shambly start. Uh, not, uh, personally, from what I saw, it didn't look like any kind of bugs that I could tell um, occurred for that restart. Um, so, yeah, from the commentary perspective, it didn't look like it was any kind of bug. It just looked like just starting on those cold tires, the PlayStation guys unable to do a proper formation lap as the host gets full tires, uh, full warm tires, um, which I'm going to go post something real quick. Um, as you guys can just hear these guys, is the safety car coming in this lap? Oh, we haven't gotten to that point yet. But I'm going to go ahead and mute myself, and you guys can enjoy the sweet, sweet sounds of these Formula 1 cars driving incredibly slow. All right, I am back. The safety car is in this lap, and I Hunter is going to be in control again for the safety car restart. As everybody has caught back up, and I'll go ahead and remove these tire details. Excuse me, so we can. Ah, okay, there we go. I'll go ahead and remove that so that we can get just full safety car restart experience here from I Hunter as he again leaves it late, still weaving, and he finally gets it going. As Mako is going to get a nice toe to. Uh, Dante behind. Is Mako going to actually go for a move here? As well, right on board here. Eye Hunter going to go defensive. Mako looking. And again, another compromise exit for Mako. As Eye Hunter is just going to absolutely peel away now for this time being. As Dante, as I go ahead and change camera views, excuse me, as Robin NL and Riri are going wheel to wheel side by side. Robin NL going to have to take a very compromised line as Riri goes around the outside. Is he going to be able to get it to stick? Or is. Robin and L going to be able to get some power down. Oh, it looks like Riri is going to be able to get that move stuck going around the outside. Oh, what was that turn four there on Robin and L and the Alpine? What an excellent move from the debutante of FRS here in the Ferrari seat. What an excellent move there as, oh, we saw Dante going off track just a little bit there as Hunter has been able to go ahead and put a nice gap to Mako behind who Mako is now under threat by Dante who is also under threat by Riri behind as well bon homie it looks like it's a little bit a uh, little bit far back um on that safety car restart along with yrg so wow hunter already a full second ahead we haven't even seen drs happen this lap or this race excuse me and i don't think hunter's gonna have to worry about that from mako behind mako's gonna have to worry about dante behind who riri getting an excellent exit now is he gonna be able to make some kind of move heading into turn one it looks like that toe that dante is getting from mako is just enough to be able to put Riri at bay from threat. Yep, as Riri keeps it tucked in behind Dante. Doesn't have to worry about any kind of move for the time being. But Riri got an excellent exit out of turn three before being able to set himself up nicely to overtake Robin in the previous lap. But it looks like he's just not close enough. Excuse me, they're not close enough to be able to get that move done again. But it's still very close. And Mako just kind of Keeping it simple, keeping it safe to Dante behind. Whoo, me oh my. Me oh my. Mako barely trying, barely keeping on to the back of Hunter within that DRS range. He's just absolutely struggling, but he's, he's right there, right on the cusp of it. Two Hunter ahead, but Hunter just doing an absolutely fantastic job being in control of this race. And we should point out, too, that Mako and I Hunter are the only ones who have yet to come in for a pit stop. With Mako being on the hard tires and I Hunter being on the medium tires, I'd suspect that I Hunter is not going to be able to go long to be able to get to that lap 23 mark to be able to go to the soft tires, but Mako absolutely will. So it's going to be a fantastic 
finishing stage of the race when we get to that point, if we get to that point, as we've already had two safety cars, half the field gone by this time, <laughs> by lap uh, seven, I believe it was, lap seven, lap six. Anyways, excuse me, that was a bit loud for me. Um, as we ride on board, DRS has been enabled this time around, but the drivers won't be getting it on the start-finish straight. They'll have to wait for the DRS detection zone coming up out of turns, what was that, seven, eight, turn, or turn nine, excuse me. Um, they'll be getting some DRS to be able to attack, so I Hunter Is Mako going to be pushing to try and get into that DRS range as he's already two tenths outside of that uh, incredibly important one-second uh, gap needed? And I don't think he is. He is enabling ERS, he's at 50%, but I just don't think he's going to be able to get it as the DRS detection point, they're coming up to it now, and he's not going to be able to get it, so he's going to be under threat from Dante behind, although it is an incredibly short run all the way to turn 10, especially when you have that DRS, I don't think anybody is going to be looking to get a move done. Right now, the only two drivers who have DRS are going to be Riri and Dante. Dante now 5 tenths behind, half a second behind, Mako ahead of him, looking to probably going to try and make a move out of turn, uh, what is that, 15, turn uh, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, I don't know how many turns on this lap, 17 lap, as, ooh, Robin and L has gone round. Looks like there's no damage on the front wing that I can tell, does a good job not getting in the way and impeding any of the other drivers, but we'll cut back to Dante, who will have DRS to Mako ahead. Ooh, Mako just having a pretty good run out of that final corner. Meaning that Dante is just not going to be close enough. And, ooh, Dante goes really deep on the brakes as well. It's compromising his line a little bit there as he takes some curb out of turn two. But Riri, the T3 master, getting an excellent run. Is it going to be close enough to pull another move around the outside again? Will it be nearly identical? No, Dante going deep on the brakes. Trying to compromise Riri, but Riri does a fantastic job. But Dante's not done with it yet as they go side by side down through. What is this turn something before turn nine, turn seven? Turn six, I don't know, but it's fantastic racing, and I'm loving it as Riri does able to get that move stick now. But critically, this has launched Mako further up the field, out of threat to any kind of DRS, and Mako now getting DRS. Yes, Mako has gotten some DRS to Eye Hunter ahead, so now he's looking to make a move. Is Dante going to be making a move on Riri? No, too far back. And oh, just again getting caught out by that long, long braking that you need in these new heavier cars. And uh, wow, yeah, <laughs> it's starting to get interesting now. It's starting to get interesting now. As I Hunter is just trying to get Mako outside of the DRS range. Oh boy, oh boy, Dante. Are they going to be able to get a nice run out of this final corner? Are they going to be able to get a, a good run? Way too far back, I'm afraid. Way too far back as Mako puts in a fastest lap. Under a second now. Purple. Fastest lap for Mako, like I just said earlier. Goodness me, why am I repeating myself? Whew, okay. We'll continue to look at this battle here for P1. We still have quite a ways to go. These two drivers that we're looking at, Mako and I Hunter, the only two drivers who have yet to pit. Our defending champion, Mako, who started P4 surprisingly farther down the grid than we would have expected from this Aston driver looking to defend his title, has made his way up to P2 and is threatening a win for P1, but we aren't even halfway done with the race, even though it certainly looks like it with how many drivers we have missing. But we're coming up to this midfield DRS zone who is going to be looking to make a move as Mako is a lot closer this time around, but it's just going to be too far back, especially with that tire difference between these two drivers. Uh, Hunter, are his tires giving out? Now that I think about it, are his tires giving out as Dante is not close enough to make a move on Riri as well? But we see Dante taking some very interesting lines, a lot different than what we see to, to, to traditional lines for these drivers. As he's going a lot deeper on the brakes, but somehow is able to still find a lot more speed out of some of these corners here. As he's going to be the closest one on track heading through this DRS zone. But we'll go ahead and cut to Mako and see if Mako is going to be able to make heads or tails of this as they peek over the head hill. So I'm not able to see exactly where they're at. No, he's too far back. Dante as well is too far back. So again, we're just going to be waiting. Just going to be waiting to see who's really going to be pushing it. Again, we're way too early on in the race. And Dante and Riri... They have, whew, let's go ahead and take a look at their tires, life as to what they got. Oh, yes. Oh, Riri's going to be having to make a stop as well. I forgot because they picked up that uh, front wing damage on lap one. So they had to come in for a front wing change to take care of that and patch it up. So, yeah, they are probably going to have to come in for another pit stop later on in the race. So that's going to be pretty critical as well. So, 
Boy, oh boy, Dante will be able to go to the end of the race on those tires. But, man, it was a tall ask when we saw Stolen Valor, Stolen Valor do it in PC4 as he felt under threat from squids. And we saw all different kinds of cars picking up back marker track it. Back marker traffic, excuse me, as I stumbled upon my words. Um, as Mako again, a little bit closer this time around, but I think those mediums are starting to wear off for Eye Hunter. Those tires are really only good to about lap 16 with heavy fuel loads, those yellow striped medium tires. And so I'd imagine that's the, the reason why Mako is just getting ever so closer lap after lap. Not seeing him actually putting in any kind of moves necessarily on Eye Hunter, just playing it safe. Hovering around 50% ERS charge, as we know, without using any kind of ERS, you're only able to regen about 9% per lap. So that is also a new thing for this game, as the gap now down to three tenths from Mako. So those those tires from I Hunter, I think he might have felt a little bit spooked as to how close Mako was getting, and he's now burning through those tires. As the gap now down to four tenths, may we see a move heading down into turn 10 from Mako in the Aston Martin here. We'll go ahead and keep an eye on these guys. As it looks like Dante is now dropping off the back of Riri as well. Even though he has the fresher tires. They have the fresher tires there of Dante and the McLaren. Um, with his teammate behind there in the uh, McLaren, Bon Homi. Recently promoted to admin in the FRS. Congratulations to him. But, uh, yeah, I can't remember if I finished my thought or not. Probably not, but Stolen Valor was able to take the tires to go quite a long distance. Um, and he was able to fend off squids in the end to take home a win in PC Division 4 yesterday. But let's keep an eye on this battle. And let's go ahead and cut to Mako as Hunter is going to go into the pits. And surely he's going to go for hard tires, I would imagine. We'll go ahead and take a look at the detail to see what kind of tires they have fitted. As it looks like Dante is going to be too far back as well to make a move. But curiously enough, Riri has caught up to that DRS range, I believe. Uh, I didn't have a chance to see it, but he caught up to the back of Mako. Sorry, see. Ugh, I'm stumbling over my words again. Riri was able to catch up to the back of Mako head, so. It looks like Hunter does indeed opt for the hard tires as he's gonna come out to the back of the rest of the grid. So, now we're gonna have to oh, start playing guessing games as to who is going to be fitting what tire. Is Mako gonna come in earlier as, oh no! I Hunter, oh, those hard tires, very tough to get warmed up and up to speed. So you got to take it very careful coming out of the pits, and that's going to hurt him where we saw it happen again to, I can't remember exactly who it was. Ah, it wasn't Squids. It was somebody else who struggled to get those tires up and running in PC4 uh, that we saw them spin around and costing them what was a potential win, I believe. Um, but yeah, so Riri, up to close, up close towards that rear wing of Mako ahead there for this time around but as I was losing my train of thought let's go ahead and hop back on board to that train of thought and that being tires we love talking tires we love talking strategy Mako would you opt for the medium tires to possibly defend against any kind of threat against I Hunter or since we saw Hunter F1 spin around coming out of the pits, you know that little mistake is going to cost him. So do you go all the way to lap 23? And more crucially, you have the threat of Riri now coming into play as well. Although Riri does have one lap newer tires than Mako, he's probably they're probably going to have to come into the pits as well as Riri is so close to the back of Mako ahead. You think what could have been if Riri had not taken that front wing change earlier on in the race, although the safety cars did kind of neutralize it, but Riri could be in a much better position, could possibly be leading this race right now had they not picked up that front wing damage. But man, it looked like these hard tires, often for the hard tires at the start, might have been the way to go. We'll just have to keep our eyes peeled and see what exactly we'll play as we have crossed the halfway mark and we're starting to come into the strategies for these medium runners, for the hard runners, if they want to opt for the medium tires. I'd imagine that that pit window is going to be opening here as Riri is going to be right on the back of Mako coming down the start finish straight, getting a good exit. Mako looking like they're struggling a little bit, and Riri just has it absolutely hooked up. Three tenths separating on Mako, printing on the afterburners. Not using any ERS is Riri. Looking, 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 looking. We are checking. Are they going to make a move? No. They are just going to be playing it safe and stick right behind that gearbox of Mako. Getting used to the look of that rear end of that Aston. Probably going to be going in during the debrief. 
informing the Ferrari engineers what Aston's doing. Um, as Mako going a little bit defensive there into turn four here. So Mako feeling a bit threatened from Riri behind. Does Mako off for the medium tires? Although he does have that clean air ahead of him. I mean, I guess as soon as Riri overtakes you, that's when you go into the pits maybe? Or do you push all the way those five more laps on these hard tires to be able to carry out the soft tires to the end? I, we're just going to have to wait and see. I'm not a driver this season, or I kind of am in PlayStation. You know, long story, Methelwalk and I doing opposite of whatever, you know. Uh, he races, I commentate, he, I commentate, he races, yada, yada, whatever. Anyways. And also, Dante still sticking with these guys as well. We'll go ahead and get some broadcast time for some of the other guys that we've kind of missed out on. Bon Homie. Um, I can't remember how his race has been going. There's just been all, he pitted. Oh yeah, I believe he pitted earlier on uh, for the hard tires, opting for a free pit stop. If I'm not mistaken, Rob and NL having some bad luck uh, with a new handling model, finding himself caught out. YRG, um, I can't remember exactly what did he pick up some front wing damage earlier on, or was that an Alpine driver? I really can't remember. It's just been so many shambles to try and keep track of. My goodness, as YRG looking to try and potentially catch up to the back of Robin NL. Let's go ahead and pull up their tires again. Always love tire talk as I Hunter with his new tires. Yeah, everybody with 10 lap plus old tires. Mako at, at 18 laps as I Hunter puts in the fastest lap now. So he's clearly looking to make up for his mistake of spinning coming out of the pits now. Um, as you can see that full purple track, meaning that he'll pick up that crucial fastest lap point if he does indeed hold that fastest lap but i imagine we might not be seeing him hold on to it with mako and riri possibly uh going on to soft tires so riri i have to admit riri is in such a great position right now um even heck even dante is in a great position with his hard tires i would imagine that they would probably just want to react with the guys ahead you pit if they pit kind of situation um although i'm again terrible strategy so maybe you don't and you go for the overcut. I don't know. I do not know. As Mako is going to dive into the pits, what is he going to opt for here? It's surely not the soft tires. It's just way too early to be putting on the soft tires in the race here. And more crucially, where is I Hunter going to be in all of this? Oh boy, did that actually hurt I Hunter there as he's going to be coming in now. And Mako does indeed put on the medium tire, so he will have that tire advantage to I Hunter. But where's it looks like he's going to be well and clear ahead of I Hunter, so not having to worry about any threat there. Robin and YRG are probably going to be hurting towards the end of the race. Mako clearly makes it outside of them as I Hunter still putting in yet another fastest lap. So what is Riri and Dante going to do to react to this as they are the ones who are fighting close with two Mako ahead? How are they going to react to it? Seeing also on, oh, I don't know if they'll be able to see it, but we can see it that I Hunter is far down there. Well, actually, if they are, if they do have that track map, they'll be able to see that I Hunter and that Red Bull Excuse me, um, if that eye hunter is uh, is behind Mako, so they know that that guy who was leading the race before they head into the pits as Riri goes off just a little bit. Are they going to be diving into the pits as well, or are they going to be opting for the softs and extending the stint here to lap 23? Riri and Dante should easily be able to, as they were both able to, um, both able to go uh, or pit earlier, having to pit earlier. As Riri does dive into the pits, so he does react to Mako heading into the pits, and crucially. Mako just around 20 seconds behind as Riri hit that uh, pit finish, pit line, excuse me, the pit uh, speed limit line. So where is Mako going to end up? Where is Riri going to end up? Riri does opt for the medium yellow marked sidewall tires. And where is Mako going to end up? R Mako coming around the final corner here. Riri swaying stuck. Finally opens up, gets rid of that speed limit, and where is they? Where are they going to end up? Come on, camera! Let me cut to him. 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 Mako! Oh, he get, does get the overcut on Mako. We saw. I talked about it earlier. The undercut just isn't too effective here. But crucially, Mako is going to have some tires that are already up to working temperature. There's Mako goes off track a little bit there, alongside Riri. But Riri, all the tires are just not there in working range yet. In working range yet. Oh my goodness. So that's an easy move done for Mako. But I'd imagine by now these medium striped tires. Excuse me. Man, my brain is just a complete scramble today. But these medium tires are probably switched on by now. So Riri, man oh man. They're going to have to get this move done on track. It's like, oh, pull a, <laughs> it's like, get a cramp in my hip. My goodness. 
as I just try to readjust here, I'm going to go ahead and stand up for this because this is quite exciting. Quite an exciting race. And importantly, what is Dante going to do? Dante, what are you going to do, buddy? You got, oh boy, oh boy, how old are your tires here? 15 laps old, so you can go to the end of the race. You have an 11 second gap to Bonhoey behind. As we, oh my goodness, we missed something here. We missed Eye Hunter and YRG going at it. So we'll go ahead and move that out of the way. It looks like Eye Hunter was trying to get a move done on YRG as they already gotten past Robin and Ellis. Ooh. What? That's not going to be a great exit out of that final corner there. He's going to find himself snapping out a little bit. Not being able to catch YRG this time around. So, or are they going to be able to? Is he going to send it from this far back? What a risky move. He does way late on the break. So deep into the corner. And YRG is probably going to have taken a better line though. No? Is he going to be able to fight back coming out of turn three? Heading into turn four? Oh boy, oh boy, we see the red flashing lights on the back of I Hunter's car as he does a little bit of a move to try and put his car in front of YRG, but he's not able to get it there. But whew, I Hunter just barely able to hang on now as we go ahead and cut back to Riri in this battle for what I'd assume is possibly going to be for P1. Assuming that Dante does come back into the pits for some softs later on, not 100% sure. If Dante does keep it out, they do have 18 second gap to this battle back here where he was fighting alongside them earlier and Dante still staying out further and further again and again oh I'm starting to get a little bit warm now in this commentary booth ladies and gentlemen it is an exciting one it is an exciting one and Riri is close on the back of Mako there is they gonna is they are they gonna be able to get a good run out of that final corner they do but so does Mako ahead are they gonna be using some ERS doesn't look like it they're just gonna be Hoping and using that DRS as they get the fastest lap now. Riri in the Ferrari. Mako going to go defensive on the inside. And he's just going to have a slightly compromised line. But we see Riri just make such great work of those who are unable to take a great racing line through turns one and two. As we approach turn three where we've seen Riri overtake cars around the outside here. Not going to be looking to do it this time. We still have ten laps to go in this race. Riri going to be playing it safe for the time being. Also waiting to see what Dante ahead is doing as well, possibly. And Bonhomi even as well. Bonhomi could opt for an another stop if they'd like to. Although with, oh, what were we looking at? Three seconds to the car behind. Ah, yeah, it's a tough call for Bonhomi. Tough, tough call for Bonhomi as he's, oh. <laughs> I cannot make heads and tails of what's going to come in this future here towards the latter stages of this race as we approach those latter stages of this race. So... The hard tires, the hard to soft strategy window has opened now as Dante crosses the line. Oh boy, oh boy, I, oh, I am so dazed and confused. Hold on a second. Oh man. And we're back. And just like that, Riri is going side by side, getting an easy overtake on Mako as they were able to use some DRS to get ahead of Mako. And now looking to Bonhomie ahead in the McLaren, who is on um, some older hards. I don't know exactly how, 18 lap old hards. So he, oh man, he is probably going to have to put it as Riri does put in a purple sector one there. So they're still banging out fastest laps, getting that extra crucial point that might be essential towards the later parts of this season but man oh man Riri doing a fantastic job to be able to get that move done on Mako and hopefully they're able to break, break DRS but unfortunately for Mako Riri is going to be getting some DRS to Bonhomie ahead so unfortunately for Mako it's not going to be good is Riri going to be looking to make a move no none of the drivers right now are going to be looking to make a move um, on this as this battle for the final podium positions are unfolding as oh what do we have going on here is Riri looking to make a move around the outside of Bonhomie there. Yes, they are. And almost pushed slightly off track there as Bonhomie now. Oh, he's forced to give it up. And crucially, too, Riri is not going to have any kind of DRS. But what they do have is a car in between them and Mako. So Mako now making his way around the outside of Bonhomie. Going to have DRS. Bonhomie not putting a, any kind of thing, any kind of uh, stake in this fight, in this battle, I guess. But having that Bonhomie between... <laughs> Riri and Mako really absolutely helped out Riri as now Riri is ahead by 
a second well clear well not well clear excuse me clear of the drs for the time being so mako's gonna be trying to make up that gap make up that two tenths that he needs to be able to get back in the drs range of riri ahead as he already does my goodness oh well almost it's gonna be so hard to tell we're just gonna have gonna have to wait for the end of it and also too dante continuing to stay out this guy has to pit surely by this lap or else he is going to be kind of stuck going to the end on those hard tires along with bonhomie as well who we should mention i hunter has been slowly catching up to these guys um on their hard tires they opted for the medium to hard strategy as mako puts in a purple sector two there and dante looks like they continue to stay out so is dante going to be going to the end on these hard tires and crucially as well what about his teammate and the other mclaren bonhomie what is bonhomie going to do now that he has both of these guys past him he only has a six second gap to the cars behind and they are on much fresher tires so yep bonhomie is into the pit so i'd imagine that that would be the soft tires going on to Bonhomie. We'll go ahead and pull that up as Bonhomie, oh no, picks up a five second penalty for speeding in the pit lane. But that is not what I wanted to do. I wanted to look at the tires that Bonhomie ends up hitting as I Hunter does overtake Bonhomie while Bonhomie is in the pits. But Bonhomie will have those fresh, soft tires to be able to go to the end and should be easily able to get a lot of pace out of those tires. And if anything, at the very least, be able to get some fastest lap points. Although we'll see what Dante does as well as they aren't really catching Dante as much as I would have expected these guys on the softer, fresher, medium compound tires. Dante is potentially looking at a race win here. So if we do the math, there's seven minutes, there's seven minutes, there's seven laps left in the race. And that means they're gonna be having to take out just over two seconds a lap to Dante ahead. So this racing, I don't know why the camera angle is putting us there. But this racing between each other is just helping out Dante even more to potentially take home a win for the McLaren team for in Woking. Me, oh my, what a spectacular race. I was worried with so many people DNFing early on that we wouldn't have any exciting racing, but our... Oh no, Riri's round! Riri's gone round, so that's cleared it up for Mako as Riri's gone round. Have they picked up any kind of wing damage? I cannot tell from this angle, come on. Uh, no, it looks like Riri was fortunate enough to not pick up any kind of damage, so Mako now is let loose to go after Dante, but only six laps left to take out a 16 second lead, or a 16 second gap, excuse me, Dante looking absolutely spectacular to take home a win, gonna have to be taking out way more than two seconds left, let me just pull up my trusty handy calculator here, let's see, we got uh, 16 second gap divided by six laps left, yeah, two and two thirds over two and a half seconds per lap needs to be taken out mako needs to get on it right now but those hard tires are just working so well for dante also crucially for dante we're gonna have to be on the lookout to see if those tires might go pop because we have seen that in the pc reserve race where dr stark did have his tires go pop on him and that was his race not over because it happened early on but it might be dante's race if the tires go off on him that might be dante's race over but also i hunter now on the back of riri ahead but i i'm afraid to say it with the new drivers here i think riri is in a better position even though hunter does put in a purple sector two there but as i was gonna say riri looking to be in better shape on those medium tires but i hunter's just been on a different level today our pole sitter even though he did spin out, uh, I believe, I believe he spun out. Yeah, he spun out coming out of the pits once he pitted as he gets a little bit uh, loosey-goosey on that rear there. As you can see, that time start to tumble uh, or build back up to that gap to re ahead. But man, oh man, Mako, my man, you got to get on top of it. The defending world champion here in PlayStation needs to get on top of it. Although P2 wouldn't be a bad start, but I'd imagine that he'd be wanting P1 even more. But... He just doesn't seem to be pushing it. We'll go ahead and ride on board. Take a look at his ERS. Not deploying it right now at 40%. Man, Dante, the surprise winner here. Well, okay, I don't want to jinx him. We got five laps left. But the current race leader and looking to be in a very great position to take it home. Avoiding any kind of any kind of tire pops, any kind of shambles. And he could even possibly dive into the pits if he wanted to take P2 and play it safe and opt for the soft tires but yeah it's it's way too late for that i'm afraid to say as bon homie is now catching up to the back of robin um now as riri picks up three second time penalty for multiple warnings but we'll go ahead and ride on board with uh robin uh and bon homie as we have another battle unraveling on track here bon homie with those nice soft tires you'd imagine him wanting to get 
through and get this move done on Robin as soon as possible to make these soft tires actually worth their weight in gold or red I guess as he's a bit too far back this time around but this is a sector where you can really lean on that mechanical grip from the tires with a lot of low speed corners this is really the only aero dependent corner here along with the final corner so as we come up to these chicanes here we should be seeing Robin uh, losing a lot of time to Bonhomie who are currently on board with right now so Bonhomie needs to get a good exit he just didn't get as enough use out of those soft tires there and now he's gonna be wow he is way far back Robin opting for the 0-0 wing strategy as Mako is now starting to dig in a little bit to that gap of Dante ahead but I'm sorry big man you just four laps left it's not looking too good for the win for the Aston driver the season five division one PlayStation champion me oh my Marty McFly this race has been something else we had shambles at the beginning more shambles with the safety car restart and then excellent racing throughout the rest of it as I Hunter is able to get some DRS on Riri ahead and I am still kind of surprised to have yet to see a fastest lap from Bonhomie I guess Bonhomie with this five second time penalty maybe just not thinking it's worth it um, as Robin as well is picking up some pace in closing that gap to YRG ahead so we'll go ahead and ride on board with them and kind of see what is going on with these drivers battling it out in the two blue cars. Robin NL in the Williams to YRG ahead in the, oh my goodness gracious, Robin NL in the Alpine, excuse me, to YRG ahead in the Williams. That was my mistake there as I Hunter does close the gap a little bit now as I don't know why I cut away when we might be seeing a possible overtake. Uh, Bonhomie is just unfortunate for him. Robin is gonna have some DRS to be able to assist catching up to YRG ahead and I think we're slated to be getting a nice nice little la couple last laps of wheel to wheel racing here and I don't know who we're going to be cutting to we're going to be looking at Eye Hunter here Mako is starting to close that gap but with three seconds left to go who knows I mean it's going to take a miracle for Mako to be able to catch up to him maybe Dante's tires might possibly go but Dante just in control of this lead now ever since he inherited the lead once Mako pitted I believe it was uh, and Riri pitted yes um, he's been smooth sailing up ahead and we have Bonhomie possibly looking to make a move now on Robin as they're gonna be coming out of this is excuse me is Bonhomie going to be able to make a move he looks for it is unable to do it Mako putting in the fastest lap so he's trying to cut that gap down to Dante ahead but Bonhomie right there on the back of that gearbox of the Alpine there as he goes side by side with uh, excuse me with Robin ahead but he still sticks it uh, sticks it back out. Excuse me, not. Wait, I don't know what I'm trying to say here. With two laps left to go, as they come around the final corner now, and it looks like I Hunter. Excuse me, we did miss an overtake here with I Hunter finally over, able to overtake Riri. But since we're into some more DRS action, Robin does not have the. Oh, now he does have the ERS lights flashing. Bonhomie looking to make a move, but Bonhomie still just not making these soft tires work for him. As Robin goes a little bit deep into that braking zone, that's going to compromise his exit. Is Bonhomie going to be able to take advantage of that heading into turn four here? We're just going to have to wait and see as Riri as well is battling again with I Hunter. I just can't. Oh my gosh, what's going on? We have these so many battles. So many good battles. We'll go ahead and cut to this other DRS zone here that's going to be coming up for the Ferrari drivers. He's going to be able to get some DRS. He's got 21%, 20% ERS. So he has an ERS advantage too. I Hunter had a bit more battery life in his car as we have Mako round. Mako has gone round, and that's going to allow I Hunter, who's at full racing speed, catching up to Mako now. Can't see the Aston driver. Just barely saw that tail of the Aston driver ahead. So Mako spun round, and oh, what happened to him? And he, did he pick up any kind of wing damage? No, it does not look like he has. But Riri, now within that one second, is he going to be able to get a better exit? It looks like oh, I Hunter runs a little bit wide as he's picked up a little bit too much. Oh, is we going to be able to go for it? i got to say, I am loving the wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing that we've been seeing from Riri as Hunter does go defensive. Oh, and that's going to force Riri onto the curb there and take a little bit too more curb than he would have liked. But Riri is certainly not giving up. His bond homie now is going to be able to get a move done on Robin. Are they going to be able to as they go side-by-side? -side, easily clears it. Uh, but he's still not going back onto the racing line, so he might have a bit of a, his line compromised there. But Riri, two laps left. Come on, guys. Show me what you can do. Get onto that final podium step. Even though you do have a three-second time penalty for track limits, you might 
be able to just wow me even a little bit more. I am I am absolutely loving the racing that we've seen from these new drivers. I Hunter, Riri, man, way to go, guys! I'm absolutely loving it. So we have two laps left to go now as Dante is rounding the final corner to start his final flying lap, and I imagine he's probably going to be able to take home the race win, even if a tire does go pop a little bit later. Riri, come on, guy, show us what you can do. Show us what you can do here with one lap left to go. Coming out of the final chicanes, they can see Mako ahead, but I think I Hunter is a bit more focused on Riri behind. Riri, I would say play it safe, just take home, get these nice points here. The what would it be? The 12 points here, take them. But oh man, he's gonna. You have to see it, Riri. Do it for the crowd. Do it for the Tafosi. Do it for Marinella. Do it for Enzo himself as he gets the car around I Hunter and takes that P3 position. Now, is he going to be able to get three seconds ahead of I Hunter? I don't know. I would imagine not. But Robin NL is now looking at YRG. What happened to Bonhomie? We missed that. I don't know what happened to Bonhomie as YRG loses out that position to Robin. That's Robin now up getting those 10 points for P5. But oh, YRG is going to be fighting back. YRG runs really wide. Not really wide, excuse me, but kind of wide on turn three there. And that's going to not give him the best runs heading down to turn four. So Dante having done a fantastic job from start to finish. I, I think this is where we're going to be seeing the final final changes in the lead or not lead but in race positions here as we approach the end of sector two here coming up out of that final drs zone as dante does cross the start finish line to take that win i hunter was catching a little bit to riri ahead but i think riri is going to be able to do it i hunter i would just suggest that you just back out you got that you got that three second time penalty advantage to them ahead as it looks like RyRG has made a mistake somewhere, and that's going to mean Bonhomie, possibly, if he can get, get these soft tires to work for him through this final sector. Here's RyRG is going to go spin around just a little bit there, and that's Bonhomie up. Is he going to be able to get enough of a gap, actually? He might possibly be able to get a five-second gap to RyRG ahead to secure a P6 finish. We'll have to see if he can put it down a little bit more. It looks like RyRG has gotten back on top of it now, so that's going to be it. Oh, that's going to be Bonhomie for the five-second time penalty. RyRG going to cross the line now. As we unlock a, an achievement, everybody wins something today, ladies and gentlemen, except for those who DNF'd early on. So congratulations to Dante pulling out yet an incredible stint. He might have been tuned into the PC Division 4 race where we saw Stolen Valor pull out an amazing stint on those hard tires as well. So he might have been taking some notes there. And if he did, it certainly paid off today as he is walking out of that tunnel onto the top step of the podium for p1 what a fantastic job from dante and also i gotta say a big shout out to both riri and i hunter i hunter coming in on the top step riri finishing on p3 on track but with that time penalty that uh, track limits morning uh time penalty um finishing p4 post race but of course these are just provisional standings as there might be some stewarding inquiries um especially with what we saw on the start so Wow, 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 wow. 14 drivers started with us. Only seven made it through to the end. Dante taking the lead in the Drivers' Championship, taking the win, sticking himself into a very nice start for this season. Mako, our division champion, not DNFing, but not winning either. A curious, curious from the... Uh, Aston Martin driver as we go ahead and just oh be able to catch our breaths here and I think it's pretty obvious if you couldn't tell as to who I was rooting for throughout the throughout the entirety of this race Riri I absolutely love that <laughs> I absolutely love the driving that Riri had having some amazing overtakes on some of the more seasoned drivers here in FRS they're gonna be fitting themselves right in and also a a a a second driver of the day i guess an, an alternate and that's the word i'm looking for an alternate um driver of the day would have to be i hunter as well i hunter had a fantastic drive himself a fantastic qualifying i think taking pole position by three tenths to the next car behind it was an amazing amazing job from i hunter and he looked to be on for a, a win here until he came out of the pit spinning when he came in for his pit stop so um unfortunate for him but hopefully we'll be able to see um, them back again 
battling away for some more exciting stuff heading on over into uh division um sorry not division blah, 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 excuse me lost my train of thought there but heading on over to um the um uh small finger champs next week excuse me but you guys can tune in we have some options uh we have the um uh, we have frs uh, community where pc division 2 i believe is going on or division 3 uh possibly um and then we have oh, let me just let me just pull up the uh let me just pull up the um season 6 info here to see where we are going to be going so yes we have PC Division 3 currently going on. They are probably wrapping it up, but we need to sign it off so that way we can have Herring Sword and Quimby commentate PC Division 2, where we'll be seeing some, hopefully, some good racing as well. Um, thank you guys for tuning in. Stick around here. Go catch the end of Division 3 race. Uh, I'm going to get off and let Herring Sword and Quimby take over. Thank you guys very much for watching. I'll see you all next week at Spa Frankershaws.